Hello folks, I hope you're doing well. We are back at the plot and it is freezing cold today. I woke up this morning and there was frost everywhere. Just just the last video I did, I said it had been a bit mild around here recently. We've only had two or three frosts. Well, apparently we've had another one because it was down to about minus three or four last night. It was freezing. Everything has been frozen solid. And we've got some interesting weather here again at the allotment today, but we'll have a look at that in a minute. So I'm here to do two things in particular. One is my little furry friends, the rats have been back and I've got them on camera. I'll stitch this together later on at the end. So you know how we're wondering how they got into the carrot bed? So it's a double height pallet collar ca uh, carrot bed with the lid on it and we thought they'd buried in and come underneath. I've got something to make sure that they're taking a different route in. So watch for that coming, that'll be a little bit later on in the video. And I've come to do a winter job. Now, winter jobs are really important. And I, I say this a few times that I'm doing now what springtime Mark will be thankful for. So the jobs I'm doing now, I, I didn't really feel that motivated to come up here today. It was nice and warm in the house. It was freezing cold outside, but I'm here and I've got a job to do. So we've got a couple of raised beds down the bottom. We've got that big mass of metal round raised bed that I need to do something with. And I know where I'm going to put it, but it needs a bit of shuffling about, a bit of rejigging in the area up the top there, just to get it how we want it, ready for when the springtime comes and we'll plant stuff out. So we'll get that done next. But if you hang fire a second, I'll come over there, we'll pick you up and we'll have a walk down the plot. We'll have a quick mooch about and we'll get on with some jobs. So when I said we had some interesting weather, the snow has been today and you can see we've got a rather wintry looking allotment and it's all right. I don't, I don't mind the snow. You know what? Earlier on it was snowing and it was it was it was pretty heavy and I thought oh, I'm not going out in that and then uh, my wife was like oh, you should go out. you'll enjoy it whenever you go to the allotment you always enjoy it and it's just right and, and I'm here and it is nice to be here but when I started driving here it started tipping it down with rain I was like oh no it's gonna be miserable but thankfully it stopped and we've got a beautiful snowy winter's allotment scene behind us but let me just come up here I mentioned the carrot bed just before, and this is the carrot bed here. And look at this, look, this front front bit's busted, so I need to fix that. But remember this, remember this gap that's here, and I'll and I'll come to that in a bit towards the end of the video, and just you'll see some interesting footage about what's been going on. But let's have a look down here about this winter job that I'm talking about doing. And it's really important, honestly, to motivate yourself at this time of year and get out and get the winter jobs done because when you know, once we start getting, even into February, when I start sowing a lot of the sort of peppers and uh, tomatoes and things like that, it starts getting really busy. So I think January is going to be the month of really sort of barnstorming, getting the jobs done. They need to be done, ready for that really busy time when the little plants and whatnot are going to be coming out. So this is the area here that I'm talking about. So you know where we are, over to the right hand side here, this is a big compost bin. We've got a bit of it. This is just a dumping ground at the back. You know, if every allotment's got one. There's bits of wood, there's bits of net, and there's bits of pipe, bits of stuff that I just need at different times. Don't need it all the time. And it's just dumped there. Now we did have the, the configuration of this. So this archway here that you can see that's sort of lying down pretty much where this big metal bin was. That was where the archway was. And then we just had the two new raised beds. And this was the experimental bed. So remember these were, this one at the front was a Hugel culture bed. And the one at the back was just sort of standard shop bought bagged compost. Bit of an experiment to see how they got on. So what I'm gonna do is this bed here, this one here, right at the back, this one here, this is gonna move to where this is. And this is going to move to where this is, because I want the tall one, I want the big tall one at the back there. And I think space-wise, I think it's going to fit all right. So it shouldn't be too bad a job, really. It's just going to be a case of a bit of shoveling the compost out of there. And I've got some new cardboard. There is cardboard down here, but it's not great. I've got some fresh cardboard in the polytunnel. We'll bring that out. Cardboard down. Shift the bed, shift the compost, move that back. Now, you can see the size of this. It's massive, honestly. I don't, I don't know if this video is going to do justice, just how big this is. And it's going to take a lot of material to fill it. Now, I'm not going to put loads of stuff in it today. Just enough to get a bit of a solid base on it and get whatever I'm putting at the bottom to start rotting it down. But we'll come to that because it's going to be a bit of a bit of a Hugel culture thing again. Maybe, maybe it's not perfect Hugel culture, but just sort of good enough for me to fill something that's so big in that if I put that would probably take at least two tons of compost I reckon that big 
metal bin there and there's no way I want to be spending like a hundred quid or whatever it costs for two tons of compost delivered and fill that plus all the shoveling so <laughs> I've got a bit of a plan so let me get set up I'll get some things moved about we'll come back and we'll get cracking with this job so that's part one complete all I've done and put some nice fresh thick cardboard down there christmas good time of year for having lots of new cardboard about that's just going to suppress the reeds also it has the benefit of when it starts to rot down worms absolutely love rotten cardboard so hopefully the worms will come along and start munching on that and do all the good stuff that worms do and it's quite funny i think Whenever you move one of these pallet collar raised beds and you lift it up and you move it and it always leaves behind this nice sort of cube of compost that I'm gonna gonna dig into and I'm just gonna shift all of this down the top the top layer of it admittedly is is frozen so I am getting some some big chunks like that but we'll just we'll just fling it in anyway and I'm just gonna have to move this over bit by bit. I did think about whether it would be easier chucking all this in the wheelbarrow and just wheeling in there and put it in, but I think now that I'm doing it, I'll get a bit of, a bit of exercise, burn off, burn off some of those Christmas, Christmas calories. I think this is probably the best way to be getting on with this. And I'm hoping, not that, not that I've measured, I probably should have measured this before I've actually done it. It's that big massive red, big massive red bin big massive round bin it's over there i don't know if you can see it just off camera or not that's going to come back here so i'll get cracking we're shoveling all this compost into there because i'm conscious as well about how much battery i've got left on the camera so i'll get this done and we'll come back to you and we'll see how things are looking in just a moment there so next bit done compost shoveled from there to there not too bad a job there were some big old frozen chunks it's not perfect in that bed once it's defrosted, I'll come back and we'll get that sorted out. So, some fresh cardboard down at the back here. Luckily, this bit of cardboard I did try out on the top of the metal raised bed there. So it does fit in it. I have shuffled some stuff about, so I've had to move the blue water pipe and some stuff around and about. So I'm hoping when I come over here to grab this, I will appear in a second. Oh, crikey. There we go. There's a shot for the camera. So we'll get this placed down here on top of the cardboard. And it's not too bad. One thing to mention, these metal bins, these metal raised beds, I haven't put the rubber beading around the top of this yet. Some of these edges do get sharp. I wear gloves today when I'm moving this. And I know from experience, because I cut my, my hand on the big one down the bottom there last year, this is sharp on the top. So just be mindful of that if you've got anything like this, that they do get sharp. So I'm just going to come back to the front here. And we're going to have a look down to see if it's lined up. And it just needs to go that way a bit. And I'm just going to turn it a little bit while I'm doing it, just to get the screws in equal places. Not that I'm, I'm not a massive perfectionist, but I do like it to look all right. So it's not looking too bad. So I guess it's a case, I don't know if you can see it as well. Now that I've moved stuff about, there's a little robin just on the back of the fence there. And it's coming in about here to come and see what we're doing. Isn't that nice and Christmassy? A robin in the snow. So now it's just a case of filling this up just a little bit. And I've got to... A couple of bags oh, of wood chips here. I think they're not too bad actually. So the I am going to put more in here. Like I say, this is this is a massive, massive space to fill with compost. So what it's going to do is it's just going to create a create a sort of base layer at the bottom there, and it's going to start rotting that cardboard down. Whilst at the same time, you know, the cardboard's doing its job of suppressing the weeds. And I will bring you over here in just a, just a moment to show you how it, how it looks. That's a layer of wood chips on the bottom. And that robin's still flying about here. And it was at that exact moment that the battery died and the camera, one of those things. But it was nearly finished anyway. That bit of film was nearly finished. You saw the, the big metal raised bed there. And I was just putting the wood chips in the leaves in there. That's going to form that base layer. But what we'll do in January is we'll have a bit of a tour about the plot and have a look about, see how things are looking at this time of year. It's a bit 
dull up there, I must admit, at this time of year. But I always find it dead interesting to see the contrast between what it looks like now, what it looks like in the springtime, and then the height of summer. It looks so different all the way through the year. But anyway, I came down here to the greenhouse to finish this off because we wanted to talk about the rats and show you that video. Before I do that, if you're not already, please think about subscribing. It's absolutely free. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Just click the red square button thing you see down below and that is you subscribed. Anyway, on to the rats. So I mentioned when we were looking at that sort of bed where the carrots go, the double height, pallet collar, raised bed with the lid on it and whatnot. And I said there was a bit of a gap there at the side and we wondered how the rats were getting in and they aren't tunnelling in. So just have a look at this footage that I captured the other night. And what you can see here is the rat sort of coming across the plot. And then look what the rat does. So you can see there that it's just jumped up and getting in the side of the bed. I, I couldn't see the holes in the netting, so I'm assuming they find another way in, but at least I know that it's going up that way and it's not tunneling in and getting in there. So that's something else I can look at as to how I can defend against the rats and sort this problem out, because it really, really does need doing. I think, again, I mentioned before, January is going to be that month for getting the jobs done because as soon as we're into February, into March, it's going to be so busy with all the springtime sort of sowing and growing that's going on that I really need to get on top of this problem as soon as possible. Anyway, that is me very much done for today. Thank you very much for watching, folks, and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.